Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash malicious compliance where people have conformed to the letter but not the spirit of a request. If you're new around here please do hit subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video but for now let's sit back relax and enjoy some malicious compliance. Happy to oblige. I am usually not a reactive person. Last night I was. Went to see John Wick 3 with the girlfriend last night and the movie was awesome. Walking out of the theatre later on after the movie, me and my girlfriend were quick to notice a small parking spot war has ensued behind her car. Looked to me like two young men, each in their own car, were battling for the space that Ariana was soon to vacate. I helped her load the last of her stuff into her car and went to walk across the lot to my jeep. As soon as I got seated and my engine started, I looked at my girlfriend and she was still in the space half backed out of it with both of those cars jammed in behind her. These guys were having a standoff, feet behind her car, over a front parking space. I drove around and got out of my car, I was livid here, and yelled at both of them to move so she could leave and they can continue their BS fight. One guy rolled down his window to protest he was here first and that the other guy was being a Richard. Whatever, not my issue. I just wanted us both to leave and let them have their fight. The second car said nothing. I stormed back to my jeep and waited for my girlfriend to leave. She squeezed her way and drove over to Dutch Bros across the street to say hi to her co-workers. I was still near the two guys after she left. I rolled down my window and yelled at the guy in the second car for being so stupid and making her feel like she couldn't leave all over a stupid space. I was angry at this point. The guy stopped his car as he was halfway backed into the space that he had won and got out. He stood up and his first words to me were, get out of your car then, let's go. I guess he wanted to fight over this? Not worth it, I thought to myself. I'm not going to fight you over something so petty dude, I shouted back in anger. Next time, learn to be patient for 5 minutes before acting like a total idiot. This flared him up as he had his girlfriend in the passenger seat. I could see the king penguin flare his chest out. What came next was a verbal barrage unlike any I have ever heard before. I like to think I know a lot of nasty words, but this guy was educating me on some other type of level. If you want me to move so bad, then move my car yourself. He would regret asking this of me later. Racial slurs followed by such vulgar and nasty speech, I was in total shock that a human could speak this way to someone else. Over a parking spot, ha! <laughs> I drove away and really just did not want to argue with him any longer. I guess I was the loser in that situation, but honestly, it just didn't seem worth it. As I drove away, he shouted one last phrase at me. That's right, run away you sigh bleep. I was shocked. It is sad to see young men act this way. What was even more lame was the fact that a family of five was walking about 12 feet away of the theatre with their three little girls. I snapped. I kept driving and went over to the next parking lot. I sat about 200 yards away with my car running for about 5 minutes, watched him park his car and walk inside with his girlfriend. So, I made a choice to retaliate just a bit. You can tell me I was wrong for doing this, and honestly, I think I will agree with you on that. But my gosh, did it feel so good. I pulled off to an empty spot and got out of my Jeep. I put my front bumper winch into neutral and spooled out about 6 feet of cable. Tossed the loose cable and drove over to his crappy Honda. Nobody was in the lot, thus nobody was in danger. I checked my surroundings. Hooked the hook on the cable to the tow hook under his front bumper. This ensured no damage to his car in any way. I put the jeep in four low and slowly backed up. When I left, his car was in the middle of the road. Cars could still get by but they would need to go around about 70 yards. I don't know what happened after that. My guess is an employee probably had to go find this guy and get him to move. Otherwise, he got towed. Was I right to move his car? No. 
but technically he did ask me to move his car and I was oh so happy to oblige. Malicious compliance. I mean, I'm not so sure about no damage to the car because he was actually parked, but I mean, he did say some pretty mean things, so he probably deserved it. The teacher told us not to help each other out and we obliged, ending in all of us getting bad grades. So last year, I was in an advanced biology class. In no way am I really smart or anything like that, I'm just really into biology and want to be a biologist in the future. I loved the class and I learned a lot, but the teacher was an insufferable douchebag. He was always negative towards my class and would actually call people idiots and tell them they aren't smart enough to be in the class. It always upset me and I felt bad because it's not their fault they couldn't learn in the ways he was teaching. It was advanced, meaning people had to express interest to counsellors and have above a certain grade in regular biology to even be in the class. So yeah, no one in the class was an idiot, he just sucked at teaching material in different ways. Because of this, and my acute interest in biology, I would help people and make study groups where we can all help each other. We would copy off each other sometimes, but for the most part do our own work and ask for help. The teacher found out about our study group through another kid in the class. The kid who snitched, just gonna call him snitch, told the teacher that we were cheating and that I was the person who organised the study group. As the bell rang, the teacher called for me to come talk to him. I gladly oblige, thinking he was going to give me another extra credit assignment as he usually did. Instead, he gave me a stern and angry look, practically fuming. So, a little birdie told me that you are cheating and helping your classmates cheat, he says. I was taken aback. I didn't know who would even say that. We rarely ever cheated off each other, and if we did, it was only on homework assignments. What? Is all that I could muster. I was beyond confused. One of your classmates came to me and told me about how you and most of your peers have been cheating this entire year and that you have been organising it. Are you talking about my study group? I ask, beginning to bite my lip and scratch my fingers. Whenever I get anxious, I chew at my lip and scratch the base of my finger till it draws blood. I also stammer and begin speaking English poorly. I don't know why I do it, it's just a nervous tick. He took this as me showing guilt and that I was lying. Is that what you call cheating nowadays? A study group? Give me a break, I'm not an idiot. Someone already told me what it is, so there's no need to lie. Just stop doing it or I will kick you from this class and fail you for the rest of the semester. But sir, it really is just a study group. We need the study group because a lot of people don't understand the material and... I say as the teacher cuts me off by waving his hands. I don't want to hear it. It's cheating and I don't condone that sort of behaviour in my classroom. They shouldn't even be in this class if they don't understand. If I catch any of you doing it again, you're out. I left the classroom nearly in tears. I not only felt hurt that someone would profusely put me down like that, but the teacher of my favourite class didn't even believe me when I tried to explain myself. I texted the group chat made for the study group, explaining the situation and apologising. Snitch decided to be a douche though. He basically became the living embodiment of r slash I am very smart. Which you can watch on my main channel, Fake Jake, if you want to do that. This kid went on a rant about how we shouldn't have been cheating in the first place. How the class was only for smart people like him. And how he didn't want cheating idiots to ruin his chances of becoming a veiled Victorian by lowering the class average. He confessed to doing it while talking about how high his IQ is and how he doesn't even need the study group anyway. The next day, the teacher made an announcement in the class that we are not allowed to help, compare notes, or share answers in any way on any assignment, or even out of class, or it would be an automatic F. I lost my stuff. I was mad at the teacher, and I was mad at the snitch. 
So, I decided to do exactly as the teacher told me and did not help anyone else and convinced my friends from the study group to do the same. If we weren't allowed to help each other, we wouldn't. For the next couple of weeks, I refused to help. My friends and I began angering my teacher by telling him we can't explain stuff to other people when he asked because he said it was cheating and not allowed. And oh boy, did that really lower the class average. If you have ever been in accelerated classes, just know that studying and getting help is very important. I mean, if you've ever gone to school at all, you know that is important. You can't learn by forcing information down your skull. It's almost impossible if you don't already mostly understand the topic. With finals coming up, we all knew this would affect our grades. The final was 80% of our grade, so if we failed it, we failed the class. But the teacher said no, so oh well, what could we do? I wasn't about to get kicked out of my favourite class. The results from the final came in, and not a single person in the class got an A. The highest grade in the class was a C+, and the lowest was an F. It was the worst we've ever done on a test ever. The teacher, being the douchebag he is, decided to confront us all in the class about it. He went on about how we're all idiots and began reading off every single test score and humiliating the people who got Fs. And guess who was one of the only three people who got Fs? Snitch. Turns out, he actually did need the study group as much as the rest of us. To everyone's surprise, one of the people who got an F spoke up. You want to know why everyone bombed the test? You took away our study group. You should have been studying anyway, even without the group, the teacher proclaimed. A lot of us can't study without some sort of help. Staring into a textbook that you already don't understand doesn't help, this girl said. She was getting more and more frustrated and looked on the verge of crying. And I don't blame her. Then you should have asked someone for help, the teacher says, clearly annoyed at this point. But you told us not to help each other or we would get an automatic F. We were just doing what you said. I was shocked at how she was handling the situation. I had never seen the teacher so red before. I don't know how it is for most people's schools, but at mine, we are not allowed to retake finals. Our final score is what we have to deal with. With no one getting above a C plus on the final, everyone in the class had a C plus final grade or lower. With everybody doing so poorly, it made the teacher look really bad. I like to believe it prevented him from getting a promotion or something like that. All I know that happened was that someone else took over for him. I like to believe his job was given to someone else because of how bad our grades are, but in all honesty, I think he just retired. I really do question why some people become teachers. Like, why are you a teacher if you hate teaching and you don't want to teach in the way that's actually good for the class? Ruining a haunted house. So, this actually happened around 11 to 12 years ago when I was part of a youth centre. It was around Halloween, and the little town that I lived in, at the time, was about 30 minutes away from Six Flags. The youth centre was hosting a trip to the park due to the fun Halloween decor and haunted house that they had. Most of the other kids that went as well were teens, which meant they wanted to go through the haunted house. Now, I always hated haunted houses as a kid. I was always so freaked out and would do whatever I could to avoid them. Of course, I didn't want to go on. I told them they could go through and that I would just wait at the exit. They started pressuring and egging me to go through with them. I should mention that we had a chaperone, but I don't remember what they said or did about the situation, because all I remember is that I said I gave in, but was mentally preparing to bail when we got to the front of the line. Right before we were allowed to enter, the employees started talking us through the rules. I was waiting for them to finish so that I could ask to be escorted to the exit when the employee mentioned these little rings. Everyone was given a plastic glow-in-the-dark spider ring to wear. If you were scared of getting jump scared by the actors, you could hold the ring up and the actors would know not to jump out. That was when I decided that yes, I will be going through the haunted house. I took the front of the group and held up that ring through the entire attraction. Nobody came out and scared us. 
At that point, I actually had fun since it was just a pleasant walk with scary decor. But the others were angry. Once we reached the exit, they all went back in line without me. Since they already knew what the inside looked like, it wasn't nearly as scary or enjoyable as it would have been on the first run through. No one tried to make me go on an attraction that I didn't want to go on for the rest of the trip. I mean, if someone says they don't want to do it, you shouldn't force them to do it. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.